A 31-year-old woman has recurrent headaches. She takes Tylenol to help relieve the pain, but nothing seems to work. One day, she has sudden paralysis of her extremities. What is the most likely diagnosis? What is the best next step? Of course, we could create a long list of differentials with that information, but let's focus on one of the possible causes of this. And that is fibromuscular dysplasia. It affects mainly young to middle-aged women and can be easy points on your exam if you know the ways it can present. It involves a proliferation of muscle fibers and connective tissues within the arterial blood vessels. This proliferation can result in the stenosis of the renal artery, the internal carotid artery, or the vertebral artery. Stenosis of the internal carotid artery can present with very specific symptoms such as pulsatile tinnitus, recurrent headaches, stroke, or a transient ischemic attack. These specific symptoms of internal carotid artery stenosis can also lead to specific exam findings, one of them being subauricular systolic brui. Now let's look back at our patient from before. So if you recall, she had recurrent headaches and sudden paralysis of her extremities. So this patient may have had internal carotid artery stenosis. Now let's take a closer look at the specific symptoms related to renal artery stenosis. These include secondary hypertension and flank pain. The specific exam finding that can be seen in renal artery stenosis is an abdominal brui. In patients with fibromuscular dysplasia, the best initial test is a duplex ultrasound or a CT angiogram. However, the gold standard to diagnose fibromuscular dysplasia is angiography. If a patient has symptoms or exam findings indicating internal carotid artery stenosis, and diagnostic confirmation of the stenosis. Then these patients should receive low dose aspirin to serve as prophylaxis for a stroke. The definitive treatment of patients with fibromuscular dysplasia is balloon angioplasty without stenting. In summary, it's very important to know that if you see a young woman with hypertension, recurrent headaches, features or symptoms of a stroke, it's very important to consider fibromuscular dysplasia. Another possible cause of high blood pressure in young women, oral contraceptive pill use or birth control use. So on your rotations, it's always good to be aware of this. If a patient develops hypertension due to oral contraceptive pills, then the treatment is to discontinue that birth control. As always, if you liked this video, power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. And to continue learning more, click this video right here.